The next keynote speaker, I guess you're all familiar with, so I will not make a big introduction, just telling. He is one of the leading experts uh, on sustainable design, working with social innovation, and I'm sure that you will make some key points about democracy and design and continue where I'm created. So please welcome Isio Mancini. Thank you. Thank you. I will dare to stay here also because I'm not so tall as Margaret. Well, uh, thank you to everybody, of course, and, and thank you for Margaret. It was really a very, such an important, inspiring. Can you come to Italy sometimes? <laughs> if we can borrow you, lend you, no, but in any case. I have to be short because I have only 12 minutes and uh, I will try to be simple. And uh, it's not so easy to be simple when the topic are so complex, in any case. Uh, I think we are here now talking about democracy, at least I talk for myself, because uh, democracy is in danger. And that has been explained, and you know, I don't have to spend many words now, but I want only to say that democracy is in danger, not only because there are some bad guys, but also because democracy is in crisis. The very the synthesis of the story is the core of democracy for me is today more valid than ever, but all the way in which we make democracy happens have been started in the last century. And as all we know, because this is our discussion always, last century and this century are very diverse. So the crisis of democracy is also the crisis of how to reorganize the processes of democracy when everything change, it changed so much. I will try to make a plain discussion on uh, trying to look by the designer point of view and uh, what we can do as designer. And there are two points. One is what we can do in terms of political uh, statement that I call the stand up for democracy. And the other one is, uh, as also been said by Margaret, our way to stand up for democracy is uh, to rethink democracy and modestly try to participate to the, regener the needed, in my view, deeply needed regeneration of how democracy can work in a hyper-connected society. So let's start for the first one. That will be short but necessary because uh, somebody, I don't know in this audience, maybe not, but in my previous conversation said to me, yes, we have to stand up for democracy, but a single person, not as a community where uh, I propose you to think if it is the case for us to stand up as a community, not only as a single. And to stand up as a community, we have to imagine that there is something that relates design and democracy. And of course, uh, the one that opposes this uh, idea says, yes, but designer as designer also for Hitler. It's true. But the fact that some tools are being used in the worst way do not mean that if we have a culture, this culture has to accept it. So it's very important to recognize or to agree, if you agree, uh, that we are part of a culture. And the culture means a group of people that have a discussion and the group of people that have a discussion has to have also an orientation. And I think that if we consider ourselves as a community that have a discussion and the discussion creates a culture, this culture cannot be against, or in my view cannot even simply be uh, indifferent to the issue about democracy. Uh, maybe the example is a little bit rough, but imagine the doctors. And imagine you know that the doctor has this oath that do not arm. Of course, there have been doctors working for Hitler. But the doctors, as a culture, could not accept it because it's against the main line of a doctor, do not arm. You understand where I come. Could we have something similar to this oath for designers? Of course, it could appear a little bit more discussable, and th this is why we discuss. Beyond the fact that, in my view, today is discussable also for the doctor because 
maybe one upon a day, it was simple to say, I'm going for the good or not. Now there are some areas in which it's not so easy. But for us, I think, and has been repeated by many people, it's difficult to say that we are not uh, here discussing to increase people opportunities to live the kind of life they want to live. And uh, we had today to do it uh, in a sustainable way. And if we propose to people, uh, if we propose to people solutions that permit to live the way in which they want to live, of course, there is something that has to do with the freedom and equity. We cannot imagine a better way of living with reducing freedom and reducing equity. And if it is like this, freedom and equity are the two pillars, always valid, last century, this century, hopefully in the next century, about democracy. So I pretend to say that there is a kind of intrinsic convergence in between the process of design intended as a cultural process, impractical also, but uh, driven by a culture, and the process of democratization. I find that it's very useful to use the concept of democratization because democracy per se is a kind of dream. It's far away. There are ideas of something that is very important, but afterward, in the daily life, what we see are processes in which we can go on or go back. And as a matter of fact, we are also worried because in many countries where we have been accustomed to think the thing that had only to go on in the democratization process, as Margaret said, we have some de-democratization process. So some places are going back. And I think that there is a lot of convergences in between what we do as designer in the sense that I said, and this process of democratization. So what we can do? Politically, I think, as a community, is to stand up and say it and that, to declare. So it's the, what is the reason to do it? It's a political reason. It's to say it's not only single people, but it's the entire community that say something is really wrong. But, of course, we have also to feed the conversation and also give some contents to our standing up. And uh, it's, it's strange for me, and the time is passing very fast, but uh, uh, I'm dealing with social innovation since many years now, and I've never used, I never talked about democracy until three months ago. Why we are not talking about democracy? Because I'm Western, and uh, I live in a country in which more or less it was assumed that we are in a democratic system. So it appeared not to be needed to talk about it. Now I think that given that it's needed to talk about this, we have in some way to look what we are doing and to discover that maybe already there are, luckily, a lot of things, a lot of events, a lot of activities that goes in the direction of democracy. And we have to ca be capable now very simply to recognize it, to look at it, to recognize it, to put them together, to give a vision and to make it visible for us, for our students and for the people outside. And when I started uh, this kind of reflection, uh, I was with my friend uh, Victor Margolin, and we said what we can do. And uh, okay, we imagined to make a letter, but I don't want to talk about the letter now. Is that the Victor Margolin uh, has one of the first uh, of the few, let's say, paper that put together design and democracy in the past uh, years. So we, we moved from a conference that you can see on the web that he gave it, uh, in the, so it's uh, five years ago, at the, at the Carnegie Mellon University, in which he, in the, uh, he focused on three ways of uh, in, having crossing between design and democracy, called design for democracy, of democracy, in democracy. Five years later, for some reason that I hope to have the time to, to shortly present, we had the need to introduce a fourth level that we call the, you have to understand the words can always be misunderstood, but in any case, design as democracy. So what is the meaning? Design of democracy, yesterday we have had here a fantastic intervention of uh, Christian Bazin. And Christian Bazin is somebody that, with his comp with, when he was in the Mind Lab, uh, was designing, redesigning something in the government. So, from the moment in which design have developed, design for communication, developed service design, especially, 
we can think that we can design, collaborate in designing the element, the structure on which democracy works. And uh, as a matter of fact, there are a lot of places they are called in different ways, policy lab, mind lab, uh, innovation policy lab, as this one that has been, by the way, one of the first, maybe the first one in the world, but just to make some advertisement to my university, also in the Politecnico Milano, we have a, a lab that is for innovation, for policy innovation. And uh, if you look and you Google, you can find a lot of them. So it means that already started a lot of designer associations that start to collaborate with government and other institutions to use the design capability for that. So here there is a kind of explanation, but I think that I already said, and so I move to a second. So after all, we are designed for democracy. So what does it mean? It means that one of the major points in this moment is to recognize that we live in the complexity and not to try to reduce the complexity. Maybe it's not so popular, but I will say complexity is good. Complexity is near to human being. If you put a human being at the center, you cannot escape from complexity. Therefore, but complexity is heavy, it's difficult. So we can play a role in trying to make more visible, more transparent, make, try to generate some uh, visions, uh, some, uh, use some tools to make something that could be difficult to be understood, understandable. And there are all the area of communication design, uh, information design, uh, visualizing, that could give a very important role. And there are <clears throat> several labs that are working in this direction that have a good relationship with some institutions using the design capability to make complexity visible. And in this way, to give a contribution to what that facet of democracy that is the participatory democracy on the side of the decision, how to take decision, how you have to be informed to take decision. So if the issue is to have informed citizens to offer the possibility to better understand the complexity of the problem they are facing can be in some way faced better if we have some designer that help. And, uh, and afterward, uh, it's a design in a democracy. That means uh, if we have this machine that could permit many different ideas to happen, we have to feed it uh, promoting activities that are specifically related to the topics that are more linked to the idea of freedom and human rights. And uh, here it's very obvious that traditionally there are a lot of activities that have been done and can be done where designers use their own capability to support the more diff different campaign. And this is a, a quasi a political action that designer can do, directly supporting some campaign for human rights or campaign for uh, environment or whatever. And we can see a kind of design activism that has been very discussed in the last year. And of course, this is a part of uh, what could be the design in a democracy. And finally, we have uh, the last one, uh, one minute, three minutes, uh, one or three? Two, two. okay, <laughs> compromise. We are bargaining, you see? Good, two. Uh, design as democracy. And uh, this has been uh, the topic we discussed uh, yesterday. We had, uh, for me at least, a very interesting meeting, a philosophy talk on this specific topic. So the issue is, uh, is it possible that what we have learned in design for social innovation in general and participatory design in particular could become a tool to help participatory democracy? So participatory democracy, all democracy is a traditional one with the methodology of the last century. We have to tell it, it's in crisis. That kind of participation, at least in the place that I know, do not work anymore so well. But at the same time, who and many people here do? I started to look in the society what is lively, what happened. The beautiful examples that Margaret did before are all examples. There is a new kind of activism. So we have to be able to recognize a new kind of activism that has happened and bring this new kind of activism as 
the engine of a new part kind of participation. And of course, it, it, it is not simple because we have to maintain the complexity, but it has not to be in some ways so difficult and sometimes boring as could be the more traditional way of, of having uh, this uh, participatory design. And uh, there are a lot of examples that have never been presented as an example of democracy, but we could and should rethink to them as a moment. So it's not by chance that Margaret was talking about uh, democracy and uh, what good signal, and the good signal were three oh, cases in which somebody invented one of these uh, citizen activism organizations. So we are working already, many of us are working already on this topic, and I think that this is really the, the most challenging part. And just to conclude, oh, it just decided there is a bomb, it's at 12 minutes, poof. <laughs> no, it was finished in any case. No, uh, what we discussed yesterday is this kind of scenario that uh, probably we have to find a better term, but at the moment it is named a design-based democracy. That means imagine one way of having participatory, design, participatory democracy as the possibility for many people to develop their own project, their own project of life. So it's not only to have opinions, because where the opinions come from? The opinions come from the fact that people discuss, that people have some arenas where the conversation happens. So what, but this kind of conversation, as has been said also by Margaret, are more and more difficult today. So we have to create the ecosystem in which this kind of conversation for action can happen. And the conversation for action are the way in which we create a new opinion that are not the opinion of the more banal digital democracy, but are the opinion of a new democracy that can be generated also thanks to many people in between them, us. And um, as you understood, this is something that I feel very strongly, and I hope that we will continue. We did yesterday the first meeting on this topic, and we have a program to go on, and I hope that many people will do it. Thanks a lot. Thank you.